Humans are social animals. When we're together, we get more done faster by talking face to face. But it's still hard to get devices that are near each other to interact. When they're together, they should work together. My name is Andrew Bunner, and Nearby Messages is a new proximity API to let Android and iOS devices communicate across short distances. Nearby Messages is perfect for setting up ad hoc groups, collaborative sessions, or sharing resources to people in a co-located space. It gives you a publish subscribe API to pass messages between phones that are within about 100 feet. To make this work everywhere, it takes a bit more than magic. Nearby Messages makes use of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and even an ultrasonic modem that uses the speakers and microphones. We'll see how you can use that to restrict the range down to about 5 feet. Let's dive into a fun example and see how Google Play Games built the Nearby Players feature to make it easier to set up a multiplayer game. Sending invites by scrolling through a buddy list or typing in user handles is a pain. We'll pre-populate the game invitations by using who's nearby and in-game. For creating a gaming session, we might want to publish an avatar image and maybe a gamer handle. You can serialize this data however you like. JSON, protocol buffers, CSV, it's up to you. Pass the serialized bytes to the constructor of the message object, call publish, and we're off. We also want to see what players are nearby. The subscribe call takes a message listener. Its onFound method will fire when the same app on a nearby device calls publish. Within the onFound handler, we pull out the bytes from the message with get contents and modify our UI to show the players to invite. It's important to wait for the user to take an action before calling publish or subscribe. For example, a stateful button like this is perfect to let users know nearby is active. Waiting for user intent is important because your app will need to prompt the user to get permission to use nearby. Nearby introduces a new runtime permission consistent with how Android M handles permissions. You don't need to add anything to your manifest. And that's important because your app will continue to auto-update. Before calling publish or subscribe, you'll want to check to see if your app has permission to use nearby with get permission status. The return status object tells you if you have permission and gives you a way to ask for it if you don't. You can see all this in our examples on GitHub. The best part is, it all works on iOS. You can pod install nearby messages and build the proximity experience across iOS and Android. On iOS, when you call publish, we'll automatically prompt the user with a pre-permission dialog to explain why the app needs microphone. If your app already has mic access for other reasons, we'll trim down the pre-permission text. But let's say you're publishing something more sensitive than a gaming avatar, maybe an invite token or a pointer to a document. Nearby's default range of about 100 feet, or 30 meters, might be too far for your taste. Let's restrict Nearby to only using the ultrasonic modem and get that range down to about 5 feet. The publish call optionally takes a strategy object. Just call set distance type earshot on that before passing it to publish. If your use case has natural send and receive roles, you can speed up the exchange by telling Nearby which side should broadcast and which should scan by calling set discovery mode. So that's how to use the API at the code level. There are four tips to keep in mind when you're designing your user flow for Nearby. The first is battery. Nearby is doing a lot with the radios and sensors. An active publish or subscribe will cause your app to consume battery at 2.5 to 3.5 times the normal rate. So you don't want to have that publish or subscribe going all the time. Second, you should require an explicit action before invoking Nearby, a button or switch to activate Nearby, or maybe a special screen. You can find our standard icons for these at developers.google.com slash nearby. Third is to avoid surprising your users. The UI should make clear what data will be visible to nearby users of your app before you call publish. Also, when your buy is active, we suggest indicating this to your users with an animation. Finally, exiting the app or leaving the flow that requires nearby means you should stop any active publish or subscribe. In your activities on pause method, call unpublish and unsubscribe. So that's nearby messages, a new way to reduce the friction of working or playing together when your users are together. Visit developers.google.com slash nearby to get started. We can't wait to see what you build.